Okay, um, let me just take it again. A light beam AB sits on two pivots C and D. A load of 10 newtons hangs at 0 0.2 meters from the support at C. Find the value of the reaction forces P and Q at C and D. Okay, um, I think I was meant to draw this diagram for you. So, um, let's get the diagram then. Okay, the diagram has to do with something like this. Oh, sorry, I think it's just best I use a, a straight line. Okay, then the next one is um, Okay, we have um, another one pointing downward. Um, oh, there's nothing I can use as Going to use this as a pivot. Okay. I'm going to be using this um um let me just use this Let's use this as a pivot. Now, um, this one is, oh, there was something here also. Sorry, I missed that point. Now, this is four meters. This 
is P this is P this is this is Q like somebody said quo all right this is a uh, two meters this is six meters this is c this is d a b all right so is this something you can try um i get this is 10. so do you think you can try that? Is that two or zero point two? You said zero point two meters. Two meters. That thing is zero. This area is zero. Just. Is that? Wait, because you said zero point two meters. Oh, I didn't say. Did I say zero? Oh, sorry, not zero point two at all. I'm sorry. I just saw that now. Even it looks. It looked like zero point two. I'm sorry. at all. So two meters from the support at C. Okay. So, so can you try that? Now let's try this from here. Okay, um, the first thing we know is that um, the sum of the forces, the sum of the forces now is going to be, uh, the upward force is going to be equal to the downward force, which is P plus Q is equal to 10. Now, taking moment, which is the sum of the clockwise direction, is equal to the sum is equal to the anti-clockwise direction. Now I want to take uh taking a I want to take the moment from uh, taking the moment from this that becomes from here. Let's we are turning it this way, and this one it's coming. this way so that becomes the moment at this place the moment from c becomes 2 times 10 is equal to is equal to um q times Remember, we are the whole turning. That would be six plus two, right? That would be eight m. Now, this is q is equals to twenty. That's two times ten over eight. So, what's the answer, please? Twenty over eight. Now two point two point five. Now um, from here we can decide that um, we can decide to do the way I told you. Then then we could say p plus q is equals to ten. Then um, p is equals to ten minus. 2.5 10 minus 2.5 which would also give us 7 should give us 7.5 but if we want to take the moment for example we want to take the moment for that we could also see remember we took this area before 
now we can the moment around Q, we can say, okay, at this point, Q is turning this way. Q is turning this way. Okay. And P now is turning this other way. P is turning this way. So for Q, we're going to be having 6 to 10, which is 10 times 6, which is giving us um, P turning this way. We don't know P now. That's going to be P times 8. So this becomes um, P is equal to uh, 60 over 8. P is going to be 60 over 8. What's the answer, please? Seven point five. Seven point five. So that means we are we are correct. Okay. So that's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. So it's um that's a way to solve um a similar question like that. All right, let's take another another question. A pole, sir, are you done writing? Yes, sir. Okay, let's take this question. A pole AB of length 10 meters. A pole AB of length 10 meters and weight 600 newtons. And with 600 newtons, has its center of gravity, has its center of gravity four meter from the end A, four meter from the end A and lies on horizontal ground and lies on horizontal ground the first question now is draw a diagram to show the forces acting on the pole draw the diagram draw a diagram to show the forces acting on a pole when the end B is lifted, when the end B is lifted by a vertical force, when the end B is lifted by a vertical force, the next one is um, calculate the force required to begin to lift this end. Calculate the force required to begin to lift this end. All right, and the next one, prove that this force applied, prove that this force applied by the end A will not be sufficient to lift the end A from the ground. Prove that this force applied at end A will not be sufficient to lift the end A from the ground. Okay, can you, can you illustrate it? Can you illustrate that in a diagram? That is can you repeat the question? Okay, let's go over it again. The pole AB of length 10 meters and weight 600 newtons 
has a center of gravity 4.0 meters from the end A and lies on horizontal ground. Question one, draw a diagram to show the forces acting on the pole when the end B is lifted by a vertical force. Next question, calculate the force required to begin to lift this end. The next question, prove that the force applied by the end A will not be sufficient to lift the end A from the ground. Did you get that now? Yes, sir. Okay, can you draw the diagram? Um, look at it and um, I want you to annotate it. Draw the diagram, look at it well and draw the diagram. This is the ground that you just drew. This is a ground. So I want you to get the drawing correctly. This is a ground. This is not a pool. Okay. Now, this, there's a horizontal ground. And they said it lies on a horizontal ground. There's a pole of 10 meters. So that means you should draw a pole separate. And it has a center of gravity from the end A. That means from this end A, it has a center of gravity um, 40 meter from the end A. And again, they said it has a weight. So that means there'll be a weight pointing downward. Yes, I like this one that you did, but we are yet to see the pole. Now, let me just explain something. They said draw a diagram to show that the force acting on the pole when the end B is lifted. Listen, listen, look at this. You know, when something is lifted, it's slanting, isn't it? It's, if, when something is lifted from one end, it's slanting at the other. That means the four is, that means the pole is something like this. It's slanting, it's slanting. So that means you're going to draw a slanting pole of 10 meters. Now, that means at where it is slanting from the and A is four meters. You should be able to know what the other meter will be from end B. So do you understand the explanation now? Do you think it's something you can draw now? Yes. All right, I want you to draw that again. This is awesome, this is awesome. Um, it's not even different from what I was going to draw. Mine would have been something uh, of this nature. Uh, mine would have just been something of this, okay? And then um, I was gonna draw something like slanting like this, okay? And then um, I was gonna draw um, my weight here, the 600, and then um, I was going to draw probably maybe something here and then the weight how why this was lifted and then so it was not going to be something different you did a very awesome job now um okay uh, there was something i was meant to put here also from this place to this place is at four meters. From year to year is at six meters. Now, the ability for you to learn, okay. To learn that, that's four meters. And this is six meters, okay. This is at 600 Newton. Why I did this was um, for, uh, how I drew slant was I wanted to be, it to be long. And um, I did it this slant because um, this place is smaller compared to this place, having known that it's a 10 meter um, rule. It's a 10 meter rule, okay? And uh, probably if I make here P, I was gonna make here Q. Now that same thing you did down. I was gonna do the same thing here. 
to show that it's um, to show that it's it's um, a horizontal ground. Okay, we're gonna do. Same thing here. So you did an awesome job. Very good, very good, very good. Now, the question now is, um, okay, we've drawn the diagram. Calculate the force required to begin to lift this end. Calculate the force required to begin to lift this end. That means this was where it was lifted from. It was lifted from this and from this place, Q. Q, it was lifted from Q. So calculate the force required to begin, to begin to leave this end. Sorry, was there something else that I'm trying to check? Okay, to begin to leave this end. So that means we are looking for Q, taking the moment for Q. So I guess it's something you can try out. So how do we calculate the moment for Q? Okay, that's a very good one. You got it. Uh, sorry, 240 Newtons. Now, the axis that we should prove that the force applied at point A would not be sufficient. So, that means we are going to take moment from here at point B. That becomes um, 240 times 10. Now, we are taking this moment here, then and that becomes is equals to 600 times 6 we just want to prove 240 times 10 that will give us um, 2400 600 times 6 is what Now, at this point, we've gotten to realize that at this point, we've gotten to see that it would not be enough to prove that the force applied at point A would not be sufficient to lift the A to the ground. So we've just discovered that um, the 240, the 240 would not be sufficient to lift the ground, lift it up due to the due to the fact that 600 is far greater 600 the 600 is far greater the 600 here is far greater than 240 newtons so it would not be enough it will not be enough to lift this force that's what we just proved right now that 240 2400 is lesser than 3600 i guess you have a class now right No. Okay, I think I still I have another one for eleven. But let okay, you guys are normal having class again, isn't it? Um, normal school classes are uh, over, but I'm still having SAT class. Yeah. Sorry, did you say SAT class? PSAT. Okay, PSAT. Okay, getting ready for PSAT. All right. Now, when is your exam, please? September. September. That, no, not PSAT exams. Um, your school exam. Yeah, they're done with the school exam. Okay, exams. you're done with it. Okay. The next, I'm going to be sending your assignment. I'm going to be sending your assignment, and then um, the next time we'll be meeting, we'll be looking up at um more questions to solve. Number one and number two. We are going to go to equilibrium of bodies in liquids. Equilibrium of bodies in liquids. So let's just pray together. Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for your message. Thank you for your love. Blessed be your name in the name of Jesus. Thank you for wisdom. We pray. I pray that everything we've learned today grant your daughter greater wisdom, understanding. 
In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 All right. Um, I'm going to send your assignments to. I'm going to send the assignments. Do you understand? Did you hear that? Yes. All right. No problem. Have a wonderful time. I'll be there. I'll hear you.